we want to find this limit. 1 minus cosine 2t divided by sine squared 3t as t goes to 0. If you use direct sub, you have 1 minus cosine 0 divided by sine squared 0, which is 1 minus 1 over 0 or 0 over 0 in determinate form. Not acceptable. So we need to go back to pre-calculus. From pre-calculus, we remember some nice formulas. Cosine 2 theta is always 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. We memorize this from pre-calculus. We need these basic formulas. Okay, so we're going to use this here. Try to simplify as much as we can. See what do we have here. This is equal to the limit of 1 minus, you can switch these two, you get 1 minus cosine 2 theta equals to 2 sine squared theta. So you have limit of 2 sine squared t divided by sine squared 3t as t goes to 0. Now what? Now you can divide the numerator by t squared and the denominator by t squared. Divide the numerator and the denominator by t squared. Why is that? Because here you have the limit of 2 times sine t divided by t and sine t divided by t. When you have sine squared, it means that you have sine times sine divided by sine squared, which is sine 3t dividing by 1t and sine 3t dividing by another t, t squared, as t goes to 0. And the numerator, you have 2. This is just 1. This is just 1. Remember, the limit of sine alpha divided by alpha as alpha goes to 0 is always 1. And whenever you have limit of sine ax divided by x as x goes to zero is always a the numerical value stays here so so far we have two on the numerator on the denominator this is three this is another three three times three so you get two divided by nine 